Think of a position, any position. Got one? Yep, I've done it. Think of another one. Yep, done that one too. Think of an act. Just talking about a simple sex act. Make it as random as you want. Got one? Yep, did that one too. I'm not saying any of this to brag or anything, but um, I pretty much know good sex. And I don't have to ask, because I'm talking about like things that you probably haven't even heard of that I've tried. And it's just the love thing that got me very, very confused and kind of lost. And I guess that's why I'm doing these videos because I thought that that would happen naturally. And so now I'm at a position where that I'm not used to, right? One position I actually don't know. And that is how to actually get love. Like what is love? And how do you control something or practice for something when you have zero control over it? Because it's two people coming together and being in love with each other. Like w there's no book about that. I mean, I know I read the Kama Sutra when I was 20 and I tried all of these positions, but I still don't know what it feels like. Because the Kama Sutra, for those of you who don't know, actually talks about love and getting a wife and what to look for and what to do. Like it's the perfect book for humans, for now, for life. Because it covers everything. It's like a Bible, except it actually tells you how to fuck good also, which is probably the most important thing in keeping marriages together. And I want to get married. So, you know, it's very frustrating that I am kind of stuck on this thing that I thought I would have by now. I always wanted to be married by 30. And as I get closer, I feel like I'm going to miss out. And I don't want to just get married. Like I see my friends marrying people that they're not really in love with. And I don't even think they are sexually satisfied, to be honest. Because, you know, guys also talk to each other. And sometimes, you know, the wives don't want to do certain things. And I don't want to be trapped in that just to you know, conform or be part of something that I don't, you know, you just need pleasure, okay? And I don't think that makes me a sex addict. Um, I think that makes me a realist because look at how many people get divorced nowadays. So obviously you want to be good at sex. So I don't think I'm wrong in wanting to give and receive pleasure. I just think it's wrong how it's so difficult to find somebody to actually do it with because it's supposedly something you have to leave to chance. You can be the best person, but it doesn't mean you're going to meet the best person for you. So I don't know. That's just where I'm, I'm stuck at right now because I'm telling you, like, when I first started doing uh, the Kama Sutra and stuff, I mean, obviously I had sex before that, I wasn't a complete noob, but when I first started doing it, it was for the purpose of being good at sex, so that I would be able to find a good wife and keep the relationship going. So I've done every position and sex act known to man. And for me, sex is everything, including, like, oral and handies and stuff like that that's still sex like as long as there's ejaculation <laughs> and not always sometimes but like an orgasmic feeling coming up even if you don't come like it's still i consider that sex because the point the reason you're doing it is to orgasm so you know even if you're edging that's still sex and so, like, uh, in the Kama Sutra, I learned all this stuff. There's, like, 64 positions, right? So I went on this whole thing and called it, a, I don't know, 
a social experiment or whatever where I just went around and tried every single one of these positions. Sometimes I would actually, you know, have my phone and be like, okay, let's do this. Um, usually that was with somebody that I was hooking up with on a regular basis, um, FWB. But if I was just hooking up with someone from Tinder or something, then I would literally just read it beforehand. Like I would know what I was going to do and then get there and then, you don't just stop and be like, okay, now we're going to try this position. Now we're going to do this. Um, you just feel this flow naturally as you're going through it. And you learn over time um, how to move with the natural flow of a woman's body. Um, one of the things I learned is that like, if you really want to get a girl hot for you, you need a touch. Like, the skin is the biggest organ in the body, and that has so many nerve endings, obviously, and sensations you can play with. So just touch on its own is so important. And the best thing I learned is when you touch a woman, like, where she's not used to being touched in everyday life, that's what drives her crazy, <laughs> seriously. So just making out, even teasing a makeout, you know, you don't actually go, you go in and go out, you breathe on each other's skin, you touch the small of her back and you run your hand down all the way to the bottom of her ass, top of her thigh, give it a little slap, you know, stuff like that really drives them crazy. And the best positions I learned are where you can have your hands free. So there's this one position in the Kama Sutra that I really love, and it's the Indrani, because you have her sitting on you. Some people call it the chairman, and your hands are free, so when you're going in, you have like two hands to play with the clit, and as we all know, there's like 8,000 nerve endings in the clit, so... <laughs> you're not going to get to heaven if you're not willing to put in a bit of handwork. <laughs> And it's a position that anybody can do, so it's not like you have to do these crazy acrobatics, which I have tried. Like, the wheelbarrow is probably <laughs> the most um, physically taxing, because you, you have to work. You're, like, you're doing fucking weights um, while, you know, it's like sometimes it gets a bit ridiculous. But the one thing I notice is that you don't really need any and all of that stuff. You just need to be there in the moment and just be present and realize that you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it to make somebody else feel pleasure. Like, I think the Bible or something says it's more holy to give <laughs> than it is to receive. Um, they must have been doing the Kama Sutra when they wrote that because it's true. You do feel like this good feeling by giving a woman everything that she wants and everything that she didn't even know was possible. And, you know, she thanks you by calling you over again. But after a while it gets old and you can't really build a relationship based on sex. And I... Realized early on, I mean, first I was just doing it to like learn all the positions, so I didn't really care about maintaining or even starting a relationship. So yes, I'll admit it, I, I was maybe, still am a little bit of a ghoster. I don't want to say ghosting, because in my mind it's like, if you meet someone online or at a bar or at a party or at a club, you can't really expect to build a relationship out of that. Um, it's just not the right context, if you know what I'm saying. At least that's what I thought in the beginning. So I didn't really put much emphasis on what was going to happen after everything. I uh, just saw it as a hookup, and they did too. And sometimes if I enjoyed it, obviously I'd go back and would do it again. But when you start to see them develop feelings, it's kind of time to ghost. And I hate the word ghost, but that's 
I'd say a slow fade. It's time to do a slow fade out. Because you don't want to hurt the person more by continuing to just, you know, make it something that they maybe don't want it to be. And I think when I was around 23 or so, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready for a relationship. So, you know, I started dating more seriously. But again, I put sex first because I don't want to be in a relationship with someone who can't fuck. So <laughs> have to do that first. And then I realized that you can't build a relationship on that. And so it gets complicated because in the Kama Sutra, they talk about like how to find someone and how to court like proper dating and building that relationship also. But we don't live like in the 1800s or 60s or whenever they wrote the book. It was written like a million years ago, whatever. Um, but you can't really follow those rules because now everything is just so competitive and so quick. Like there's no time, to be honest. There's no time to to get your heart broken and then have to start all over again. I mean, but at the same time, you have to put in some effort. I'm not saying put in no effort. So my thing is just give it three months. If it feels like it's working in three months, then it's good. But just because it's working, it doesn't mean it's love. And so that's the problem that I'm finding because I am explicitly looking for that that weird feeling that everybody took, that spark. When everybody is on these dating shows and they say, oh, I, I didn't have a spark. And I'm like, who cares about the spark? You just went on a date with someone hot. Like, go do the thing. Um, I don't know. Like, is this spark thing real? Or is that just a nice way for someone to just say, I don't like you. So I'm just going to, instead of saying I don't like you because I'm not attracted to you, I'm just going to say, uh, we don't have a spark. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like, because a, 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 that's ghosting. That is ghosting. Um, because that's just insane, like a spark. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, all these people can't be lying. And all of the beautiful art that people have made and that they like dedicate to certain people. Are they just saying that to sell like a song or whatever? Oh, I wrote this love song for you. Are they just saying that? Or did they really feel that whatever, that spark? that made them do it uh i don't know and i guess this is what i'm trying to figure out because knowing how to give pleasure uh, not enough i mean if you're a really good prostitute or sex worker or whatever you want to call it i mean you can they can do that it's not enough it's not enough and then you look at the divorce rate as well, and then you think, well, geez, does nobody know what's going on? And then you hear about these people who've been married for 50 years and 70 years, and they're still holding hands. And you go, what, what is that? Are they just pretending? Are they, are they just doing it for continuity? <laughs> Or are they really seriously serious about it? How do you ever know what's going on in someone else's mind? That's what I think I love the most about sex. Because you know exactly what's going on in every moment. You can read body language. Body language never lies. From the moment you see a chick like across a room or whatever walk past you feel the vibe you just know you it's in the eyes it's in the body movement the body language and then you 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 figure you feel it out like i said the skin is the biggest organ in the body and it doesn't lie like all these dudes who are in these situations and they like oh i didn't know 
what she meant. They lying. Because <laughs> you can feel someone who doesn't want to do anything. Because you can feel the body just change or tense up or whatever. Like, when you walk um, barefoot, I don't know if this happens to you, but when I walk barefoot um, over water my body tenses up because it's cold and icky so i'm like walking on especially if like water spilled and i haven't seen it and i step in it i'm like my bare feet your body naturally tenses up so when someone touches you that you don't want to be with you can feel yourself tense up and that person can feel you tense up so it's like the easiest thing to read and so when you dealing with love i feel like you're dealing with uh, words because anyone can just say they love you and make an excuse oh i love you i have a headache i don't want to fuck and at the same time it doesn't mean that if somebody doesn't want to fuck they don't love you but it's harder to read do you get what i'm saying like people could be using you for money people could be using you for like something else <laughs> for your endowment <laughs> employment i mean um anything like it, it you, you just can't tell and i think that's what what's also kind of frustrating that's the word frustrating about this because it's like i'm chasing vapors i'm chasing something that hardly anyone ever catches but at the same time, I'm not willing to settle down with just anyone for the sake of it. Like, if there's no point in doing something if you can't do it right. Otherwise, what's the point? So you can just do what? Bring in babies? <laughs> and then what? Then the babies get mad at you because you got divorced. <laughs> and now you have to have that rubbed in your face every single day that you fucked up one thing. You only had one thing to do, just fall in love and maintain a marriage and you fuck that up. And then your kids rub it in your face every day. Great, yeah, that doesn't sound appealing to me at all. And I'd rather just have it be real for my own sake so that I don't get bored and annoyed and irritated. Because once you get married, that's a, that's a contract. That's a business contract and you're stuck. You can't get out of that position that easily and so what are you going to do you're going to say okay i need you to sign a prenup and now you've just taken all all the love on because you're doubting the person so what the point is what is the point what is all of this what the point is this <laughs> it's just a waste but i believe in it and i know it's there because all of these people can't be lying. There has to be a soulmate. And I just wish there was a book to show me what position <laughs> I need to be in to figure that out. Like, if you, if you, like, have ever seen a rom-com or, like, I don't know, read a romance novel or listened to a love song, it sounds pretty stupid if you think about it, right? I used to see all of these rom-coms growing up and I never used to watch them, but they would be playing on the TV. And I used to think this is the most stupid thing I've ever seen. But when I'd watch chicks watching them, like Netflix and chilling before like Netflix was as big as it was, I felt them have a reaction to these movies. Like, if it was a sad moment, you know the part in the rom-com where the guy always like leaves out one important detail that always gets revealed at some point and then they break up and then he has to run to the airport to fetch her or whatever. Whenever that would happen, out you could feel like the chick crying and I'm thinking, okay, so not a good time for foreplay. <laughs> Um, but she's probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's so romantic. I can't wait. She's like identifying with that character. And it's so bizarre because is that even real? Has that ever 
happened. And if it hasn't, are chicks just walking around waiting for that to happen? I don't think so. But when you look at the idea of marriage, I think maybe because even though I do believe in it and I totally want to get married, it just seems quite impractical. It seems not very smart, um, not well thought out. Like there needs to be stuff built into it, I feel, that doesn't make it a trap because if you don't know like you don't know what you don't know so when you have to make a commitment to something you don't know that's like kind of buying a pig in a poke <laughs> um that's like i don't know that's like choosing a mystery box and yeah i don't think i can justify that without knowing that secret like magic seed of what that spark is and where do you get it and do you only have one or can you try and try again because i mean statistically everybody knows that second marriages have even less chance of working like a 50 percent less chance of working than first marriage and third marriages have a 70 percent chance of not working or like nine, 70 to 90 or something so it doesn't get any better than that and i mean i'm not saying that you shouldn't keep trying over and over again because it's like the lotto you never know this could be it <laughs> and you have to be in it to win it but I'm just saying, what is your guarantee? And don't tell me that there is no guarantee and that's the point that you have to take a chance. Because I'd understand if, if you could like stay married but then also see other people to fill certain needs that you might not be getting so you don't break the family down you don't like start from scratch now you lose your house lose this your everything half your worth because that seems very stupid to me it seems very weird and what does that have to do with love anyway so love is basically your stuff is that what i'm missing so is the feeling that i'm looking for looking at some chicken being like okay i'm willing to give you half my stuff <laughs> just here you go i think that's how they should do it they should do it before that's i bet you if they did that marriages would last longer if they go okay before you get married like when you get married the act of getting married on the day <laughs> you have to sign half your worth half your salary everything i'm telling you that i've solved it i've done it I've solved the divorce rate in the world and everyone should be able to do it. Give me half your stuff and we are married. That's marriage. And you give it up front. I swear no one <laughs> cuz then the divorce is 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 really up to you. The divorce is not because of um any insecurity or rather staying with someone do you know what i mean like when you stay with someone then it's because you really want to you won't have this thing of people being abused for example and they can't go anywhere because they don't have any money now that is fucked up that's crazy that people are stuck there are people that i know that are living with other people like dating people well, they are married but they dating and they living with them just for the rent so that they can like split the rent and it's like especially bad during the thing that happened that we can't talk about because the doctors are going to get mad <laughs> but during that time a lot of people were just staying together just for um rent purposes and they hated each other and that's not 
fun. That sucks. Because <laughs> then what if your soulmate is like right there, but you can't do anything because who's going to want to date you if you're still living with your ex, right? Or if you even pretending, that's worse. Like some people broke up and they stayed together. That's one thing. But then some people were pretending and are still pretending to be in love that I know. But they're not, just so they can have a place to live. So that's why I definitely think I just solved... <laughs> I just solved marriage. You're welcome, everyone. Sign your stuff away. When you say, I do. Do you swear to do da da da? I do. Here's half my salary. Forever. And then when you get a divorce, that's when you can get your money back <laughs> not that not the one that you spent then you can stop that agreement that you pay the money every um that half your salary goes to them um and you do it crossways you do it to each other so she gives you half her money you give her half your money at the same time and that's fair right but then some people say, well, that's the same thing. No, because then you always have money to escape <laughs> if you need to escape and file for divorce. And then after that, you just go back to normal. And then people won't be, the whole idea of being used will be gone. And I think then you'll want to marry who you actually want to marry instead of like, And also people with issues, like people who are jealous. Like if you know that you're marrying someone jealous, then at least you have, the, for them to give you half their money, then you have a kind of safety net to think, to know that, okay, because you don't know if someone's crazy sometimes. Like crazy doesn't show itself all the time. So... If someone's willing, who is crazy, or who you might think might be a bit cuckoo, gives you half their assets at the beginning, at the marriage itself, then at least you know, okay, this person's not that crazy. Because you know some guys and girls can be very controlling and like stalkerish and whatever. So you don't want that. And it goes into your name immediately. Um... And so, yeah, I, I just solved that. So if only I could do that, then maybe I would know what the spark is that everyone's talking about. Because the only spark I know how to make is the spark in the clit. That's like a lighter. <laughs> Start the fire. And then I think, okay, I don't know what this love thing is. I don't know where to find it. It's definitely not through physical pleasure, even though I've given and received it from everybody in any way you could think of. <laughs> I think my favorite, I just had a memory. Um, my favorite is skunking. Have you guys ever done skunking before? Um, it's when... <laughs> Okay, let me set it up because it sounds weird if I just say it, but I need to set it up. So I was at this house party when I was in university, college, whatever you want to call it. And I was in my second year and I used to party a lot, but I also did my work, obviously, that's important. Stay in school, be cool. So I go to this party, um, a house party, just randomly, and I had been texting some chick on Tinder, and it had been a while, like a couple of months, it wasn't anything serious, just like always talking, hi, how are you, what's going on, I wanted to meet up several times, didn't happen, you know you always have that one that you just talk to, you guys know what I'm talking about, you know nothing's gonna happen really, but you just talk and then you have the ones you actually go out and plow <laughs> okay don't say plow you know what i mean i'm trying to not get flagged okay so i'm using these stupid words from american pie <laughs> um 
But yeah, so I'm texting, whatever, whatever. And then it so happened that, okay, I'm going to this party, just threw it out there, want to come, drop by, whatever. So she actually does. And we were drinking, there was alcohol, there were substances. And the night's dying down, everybody's going home. <laughs> and then a few of my core friends and I are still there, we're just chilling on the couch. You know when like it's quiet and no one's rowdy anymore. People are hooking up upstairs, people are hooking up in the corner, people are hooking up in the kitchen everywhere. And when I say hooking up, they're just making out and doing light, like, over-the-clothes stuff, nothing heavy. And so my friend comes out with a bag of some, some, some stuff, some white stuff, some snow, let's call it snow. Um, and am I allowed to say snow on here? <laughs> can't believe I'm telling this story, um, comes out with a bag of snow, and we start playing spin the bottle, except our spin the bottle is a little bit different, because, you know, I was 22, everybody was around the same age, so it's a little bit different, you know, instead of kissing the person that you land on, you have to do an act, <laughs> um, and so... I landed on skunking. I didn't land on skunking. It landed on me and I chose skunking. Because there was a bag of snow. And what's the best thing to do when you have a bag of snow? Then skunk. So in front. Of, I did mention this in the previous video. I've done stuff in front of other people. So whatever. That's not the freaky part. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying this on YouTube. Oh my god. Um. So... The chicks there, she's and she's beautiful, wild, just how I like them. But again, I don't know if I'd introduce her to my family or date her, but she's amazing to party with, okay? So um I'm like, yeah, I wanna do some skunking. She's like, What the what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, you don't know what skunking is. She's like, No. Okay, so you know, I'm like, well, you know, Give me your hand. I can't be saying this. So I put her hand on me, and then she's like, okay, and I'm like, and she like starts working it, and it's fine. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so she starts working it. Um, she starts driving the gears, shifting the gears, and the gears come up, and everyone's still around like watching and stuff it's 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 anyway so then i'm not shy everybody knows this obviously by now <laughs> oh my gosh i know my family's not watching this nobody watches this so <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> no one's gonna see this um so i um disrobe <laughs> and it's obviously at full attention i'm at full mast can i say that um superman <laughs> and then i'm like okay give me that bag <laughs> so i take some of the snow and i put a line of it a thin line on on my attention on my on my um african mamba shall we say and um more like a viper <laughs> <laughs> so i put a line of that on and then you know you have to do a line off of it because that that's skunking well, well so i put a line on and then she kneels down i'm standing now at this point because you don't want it to like fall off and i have to like hold it like straight because sometimes it's like at an angle so i'm holding it straight and then i put the line on and then she smiles and gets down she's like oh okay <laughs> and then she does the line off of it that's skunking now can't i just find a wife who can do that as well and the thing is you don't want someone who's like an addict 
it because that's the worst you have to be able to have fun and understand that there's a time and place for everything you can't just be in one mode all the time there's fun time there's substance time and there's family time like where do you find that one chick who can do all of that but like i was saying i'm thinking probably you're gonna have to do something where you have like a polygamous thing and that kind of sucks but um it looks like that's the way it's going because i know that whole thing i said about marriage if you sign your stuff away no one's gonna do that and it would be awkward. Imagine I just come up and say, yeah, give me half your stuff. I'll give you half my stuff in writing. And you just have it at all times because I trust you. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Who's going to do that? And do I want to do that? I don't know. But I mean, that would make more sense. Then I wouldn't be trying to find this freaking spark that everybody's talking about. And I'd have never seen Imagine if you could take that feeling you feel like the orgasm and imagine if that was love and you just felt that all the time. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> imagine. Then I wouldn't even be asking these questions and looking for these sparks and... I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if maybe I just am a sex addict and all of this is just rambling excuses. Nah, 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 mm -mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like trying to figure out if I'm gay or not. I mean, I know I'm not. Um, you just know like that's why i believe these trans people when they say they feel like they just know you just know what you are you can't explain it you just know <laughs> and i know i'm not an addict the same way i know i'm not gay i mean yeah I've fucked around with guys but it's all just pleasure and if pleasure was love, then I would be king. But it is not. So maybe I'm a peasant. Or a fool. Maybe love is just some marketing thing. It's just fairy tales for adults. Maybe that's what it is. But I just can't believe that people would lie for 50 years of marriage to try and like trick other people, like give up their lives to trick other people. Maybe they have open marriages and we don't know about it. Maybe cheating is normal, but that's lying. I don't want to be in that kind of a relationship. Lying, cheating, that's, that's low. That's low class. I don't like that. There has to be a spark, right? <laughs> oh. I'm just trying to think back and I've literally never, ever, ever, ever felt it. Like, I've never felt like, oh, I need to be with this person because it's like, I, for what though? That's the thing, for what? For who? Why? <laughs> because you can get sex, like, right now. Like, give me a phone. Give me, like, I'll get it. But give up my life for you, and then you give up yours. But I believe it, but I just don't see the circumstances that would... <clears throat> Allow for that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling now. I have no idea.
see and then as I say that I'm just feeling in my body and I can just feel that there's that tingle that says it's like a voice <laughs> and it's calling me it's like this this sweet voice it's a woman and she's like there is love there is I'm out here find me like where where are you <laughs> give me a sign Give me a vision. Give me something to go on. A clue. So I can find you. Because I can feel you in my heart. But where are you? She's like, I'm out there. I'm out here. Out where? <laughs> where? Where do I have to go? It's so freaking hard. She's like... Don't worry, you'll find... I hate that. Is that just like TV in my mind? TV, was that real? I don't know. She's like, you'll find me, don't worry. I hate when they say that. But that's what it feels like if I had to put it into words. It's just something that you know, even though you have no proof. You have nothing, not one shred of evidence to go on. But you know it. And it's not infatuation, it's not lust, it's not sexual pleasure and gratification. It's, it's just one person that's made for you and you were made for them. And it's just attracting through space and time. That's how crazy it feels. But I just can't logically understand it I just can't say it and then if it does happen and people ask me I'll never be able to say it and then I wouldn't feel surprised if people thought I was lying or making it up or that I just settled but that doesn't matter because I would be happy where are you? 